Good evening, everyone. I'm David Molko. We begin tonight with an apology. Last night, KGW inadvertently aired an offensive and racist photo. And for that, we are truly sorry. The image appeared during our 7 p.m. show, The Good Stuff. We had invited viewers to submit photos to our social media accounts for a throwback Thursday segment. One of those photos showed kids throwing balls at a sign that prominently displayed the N-word. The photo was automatically pulled from a comment on our Facebook page without anyone screening it. Here at KGW, we have a policy to screen all viewer submitted photos. But yesterday, we failed to follow that policy. We deeply regret this mistake. We understand this image hurt many of you, in particular our black viewers and staff members. KGW is committed to being inclusive and compassionate. We've engaged with black community leaders and viewers to apologize directly and to explain the steps that we are taking to make sure this never happens again. We failed you in this instance, and we are sorry for that. This kind of thing was already supposed to never happen again. The image that they're describing is far, far worse than just the N-word. It didn't just say the N-word. It was a bunch of Boy Scouts throwing rocks at a carnival game that looked like some sort of ship with a baby that pops out of it. And the name of the game was Hit the N-Word Baby. It was aired during a segment on the news reminiscing about good times. Nikki Haley says racism doesn't exist in America, which is what we're seeing a lot of parents afraid that their children will learn about the true history of this country. And that is very concerning because we cannot learn from our mistakes unless we know about them. If you just try to stash it away and pretend like it never happened, then images like image that was aired on that news will become even more traumatizing and shocking when you see it. Though I would like to show you that image for editorial and educational purposes, I'm worried that it would have the same traumatic effect that it had when it aired on TV. I did find the image and I do have it, but for now I will choose not to post it. I said this a million times on my platform. When you dehumanize a group of people, it becomes easier for the public to treat that group of people in inhumane ways. And this carnival game to have ever existed is absolutely nauseating. But keep in mind, this was the 50s, and those children that were playing those games grew up and had children, and their children are the ones that are surrounding you today. Some of them use that privilege to fight for what is right. But a lot of them, unfortunately, are also the same people telling you that racism doesn't exist. You don't need CRT. That black people have some sort of privilege. They are kept ignorant, so they remain hateful. So rather than me putting that image up now and having it taken out of context by other racists and further used to traumatize more black people, instead, I'm going to show you something else the news station Oregon aired. It's Black History Month. So why don't we all take a moment to learn the true history of the state of Oregon? In Oregon, for a while, you probably have an idea that our state's history is literally rooted in racism. Before it became a state, the gover uh, government of Oregon Territory passed what were called black exclusion laws. Black people were not allowed to settle in the territory or own any property. Those laws became part of the state's constitution when Oregon became a state in 1859. Voters eventually repealed those laws in 1926, 67 years later. By then, the Ku Klux Klan was booming in Oregon. Oregon actually had the largest KKK membership per capita in the entire country, and they helped to get racist politicians elected, including Governor Walter M. Pierce in 1922. And like a lot of cities across the country, Portland was also no stranger to redlining. Banks denied mortgages to people of color in certain areas, creating segregated neighborhoods. This map shows how Portland was divided in 1940. The red areas were labeled hazardous because of, quote, undesirable populations. The federal government banned this practice in the 1970s after the civil rights movement, but the effects of it are still doing resounding harm to this day.